What if we tell you that an African tribe has decoded the secrets of manhood, elongation, and enlargement? For many, African tribes are backward, but once they know about the techniques they have learned after centuries of experience, they simply get shocked. In our world, men try to find every method to enlarge their manhood, but nothing seems to work. However, an African tribe has reached the destination and included this in their initiation rites. When a boy turns into a man, initiation ceremonies are arranged where the techniques to enlarge and elongate manhood are used. This is done so the man can perform better once he is married. So, what techniques does this African tribe use to enlarge manhood? And do these techniques really work? Welcome to a new episode of Black Afric Diary, a channel where we talk about Black African history, culture, arts, and civilization. It's a place where you will see the real picture of Black Africa, its stories, and the events defining it. In this episode, we will tell you about an African tribe that knows the secret techniques to enlarge and elongate manhood. Let's get started. The tribe we are talking about is the Tamari people, also known as Batamariba, Tamburma, Samba, Otamari, or Otamari. It's part of the Oti Volta linguistic group and mainly lives in the Atacora department of Benin, where they are commonly called Samba. Renowned for their distinct two-story fortified houses, known as Tata Samba or Samba houses, their architectural style includes ground floors for livestock at night, internal alcoves for cooking, and upper floors with rooftop courtyards for grain drying, sleeping quarters, and granaries. This architectural evolution added roof enclosures to clusters of huts linked by typical Gur-speaking West African walls. So how are the initiation rites for men in this tribe where their manhood is elongated? It begins with the preparation phase, where traditional herbalists grind a traditional herb until it forms a smooth paste. The village herbalist then carefully blends the herb mixture for application. Once ready, the herbal paste is spread onto the manhood of the initiate, usually after bathing or before bedtime. After this, a hole is made in a tree branch or a piece of ivory, where the initiate places his manhood for several months until it reaches the desired size and length. In other words, the applied paste has ingredients that elongate manhood. The size will continue to increase unless the piece of ivory is removed. During the period of separation from the community, young boys chosen for initiation undergo physical and social isolation from the rest of the community. This time marks their transition from childhood to adulthood allowing them to focus solely on the rites of passage without distractions. Under the guidance of respected elders and experienced community members, initiates receive thorough instruction and guidance. They learn practical skills, cultural knowledge, spiritual beliefs, and communal responsibilities, covering traditional customs, community unity, hunting methods, and survival skills. Elders also share oral histories, myths, and legends that shape Tamari's identity and heritage. Initiates face a series of physical challenges and tests to assess their strength, resilience, and endurance. These trials include long-distance running, obstacle courses, and carrying heavy loads, preparing them for the physical demands of adulthood, and instilling traits like perseverance. Wrestling matches are a customary part of the process, allowing initiates to showcase their physical abilities, agility, and combat skills. Feats of Strength such as lifting heavy objects or climbing tall trees, further demonstrate their readiness for adulthood and earn them respect from peers and elders. The Tamari people hold scarification in high regard as a deeply meaningful and sacred ritual, marking the passage of initiates into adulthood and their integration into the community. This age-old tradition involves creating detailed patterns of scars on the bodies of initiates, often using sharp tools or plant extracts. These scars serve both decorative and profound cultural and spiritual purposes, each carrying symbolic significance representing traits like bravery, resilience, and tribal identity. The patterns vary based on the initiate's lineage, clan, or personal attributes, serving as a visible testament to their journey to adulthood and their commitment to their community and heritage. Scarification goes beyond mere physical adornment. It is believed to offer initiates spiritual protection and strength, shielding them from negative influences and ensuring transition into adulthood. Seen as a form of spiritual armor, these scars empower initiates to confront life's challenges with confidence and resilience. Additionally, 
Scarification is thought to facilitate communication with ancestral spirits and deities, establishing a deep connection to the spiritual realm. Before attaining adulthood, initiates undergo purification rituals to cleanse their bodies, minds, and spirits. These rituals may include bathing in sacred rivers, using fragrant herbs or incense, and participating in ceremonial chants and prayers. The goal is to purify initiates of impurities and negative energies, preparing them for their spiritual journey ahead. Elders and spiritual leaders play a crucial role in invoking the blessings of ancestral spirits or deities upon the initiates, seeking their guidance and protection during the transition to adulthood. This invocation involves prayers, offerings, and sacred rituals, forging a spiritual bond between the initiates and their ancestors. The initiation process also involves offerings and sacrifices to honor the spirits and gain their favor. These offerings may include traditional foods, fruits, grains, or animals sacrificed as a tribute to the ancestors. These acts of offering express gratitude, acknowledging the spirit's guidance and protection throughout the initiation rites. Before we continue further, tell us, are you enjoying the video? If yes, please like and share the video and subscribe to our channel to watch more videos on Black Africa. Let's continue now. The conclusion of the initiation rites is marked by a grand and joyous ceremony, signifying the initiate's transition into adulthood. The entire community gathers to celebrate the occasion, honoring the initiates and officially welcoming them into the adult community. This ceremony carries immense pride and significance for both the initiates and their families, representing their acceptance and full integration into the community. Festivities are accompanied by traditional dances, drumming, and music, creating an energetic and vibrant atmosphere. Participants wear elaborate costumes and showcase elaborate dance routines, highlighting the diverse cultural heritage of the Tamari people. The rhythmic beats of drums and the melodic tunes of traditional instruments fill the air, promoting unity and celebration among community members. A feast is meticulously prepared to celebrate the initiate's accomplishments, featuring a variety of traditional dishes and delicacies. The communal meal symbolizes unity, solidarity, and abundance as everyone joins together to participate in the joyful occasion. Food is generously shared among all members of the community, strengthening social ties and nurturing a sense of collective belonging. Throughout the initiation process, Initiates receive invaluable teachings and guidance from elders and seasoned community members. These teachings include a wide range of topics, including cultural customs, moral principles, and communal duties. Initiates gain insight into their cultural heritage and the significance of their role within the community, deepening their understanding of their identity and purpose in life. By engaging in the initiation rites, Initiates acquire knowledge about their responsibilities as adult members of the community. They are instructed to uphold traditional values, honor cultural norms, and actively contribute to the well-being of the community. Initiates cultivate a sense of pride and obligation, recognizing their vital role in preserving their cultural legacy and passing it down to future generations. Through the rites of passage, initiates forge enduring connections with their peers and elders establishing lifelong bonds and nurturing a profound sense of belonging within the community. But what belief does the tribe hold about manhood elongation? Firstly, it symbolizes masculinity and fertility within Samba culture. The size and length of the male genitalia are closely associated with ideas of strength, potency, and reproductive capability. By elongating the manhood during initiation, the community underscores the importance of reproduction and the continuation of their lineage. Moreover, within Samba society, the size of the male genitalia holds significant cultural value. Men with larger reproductive organs are highly regarded as more desirable partners and are seen as better suited for marriage and fatherhood. Thus, elongating manhood serves as a rite of passage, marking the transition from adolescence to adulthood and the assumption of adult responsibilities. Additionally, the practice carries spiritual significance for the Samba people. It is believed that a larger manhood not only enhances physical pleasure, but also facilitates spiritual connections and energy flow. Some cultures view manhood as a conduit for spiritual energy, and elongating it may strengthen initiates' spiritual connections with the divine and ancestral spirits. Because the whole community participates in the initiation ceremonies and manhood elongation, it becomes an occasion where bonds strengthen. 
Through participation in initiation rites and adherence to cultural norms, individuals reaffirm their commitment to the values and traditions of their ancestors. What's more, this practice has historical origins dating back to ancient practices and beliefs passed down through generations. It has originated as a form of ritualistic purification, protection, or empowerment, with its cultural and societal meanings evolving over time. Therefore, the Samba people follow the manhood elongation ritual to this day. What do you think? Can these techniques really work? Isn't it true that the reason why this African tribe uses these techniques proves that they work? In the comment section right below, share your thoughts on why this African tribe wants men to have elongated manhood. Do you want to watch more videos like this one? If yes, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon next to it. We bring videos on Black Africa, its history, rich arts and culture, and things the world should know about. Thanks for watching, and until the next video, stay tuned.